Megawatt charging. It's the fastest way to charge an electric truck. But what if the fastest way isn't the best way? This idea comes from a keynote at ACT Expo 2025, where Mark Van Wingerden, Eaton's e-mobility product strategy manager, explained why megawatt charging only makes sense for certain fleets, not every electric truck on the road. Before we go deeper, sign up for our newsletter using the link below for clear updates on fleet electrification and charging trends just like this. First, what is megawatt charging? Megawatt charging revolves around the Megawatt Charging System, or MCS, a new standard for charging that allows trucks to charge at power levels up to 3.75 megawatts. However, the chargers actually being deployed today using MCS typically deliver around 1.2 megawatts. These chargers can take a Class 8 electric truck from a 20 to an 80% charge in less than 30 minutes. Before megawatt charging, the fastest truck chargers topped out at around 500 to 600 kilowatts, roughly half the power of these new 1.2 megawatt systems. So how much power is that really? Let's put it in perspective. During a big NFL game, a stadium can draw around 10 megawatts of electricity. So, charging eight trucks at 1.2 megawatts each is like operating an entire football stadium. Since megawatt charging can deliver huge amounts of power quickly, why don't we just charge every truck at this speed? According to Mark, there are four major reasons why fleets should think twice about trying to charge faster. So the first one is the battery itself and the cell temperature. Cells are a lot like people. They like to be at relatively close to room temperature. If they get too hot, they get unhappy, they stop performing well. A battery charges fastest when it's cool and nearly empty. But as it fills up, charging naturally slows down. Looking at the room, we're quite full at the moment. If you imagine that this whole room is a battery, when there was nobody here, it might have been fairly easy to come in and find a seat. But now that the seats are filled, everyone's standing around the outside waiting uh, to, because you know, they can't find a place to, to go. The battery is exactly the same way. So your charging speed as you get to that upper limit of your battery is going to slow down. And because of the slowdown at the top end, fleets sometimes end up using larger batteries than they actually need for their routes just to make fast charging practical. Second, battery size and chemistry. To charge super fast, a battery either has to be larger or use a chemistry designed for high C rates. A battery's C rate dictates how fast it can charge or discharge. This is shown in a chart Mark presented. As the C rate goes up, so does peak charging power, but only if the battery is big enough. In other words, Faster charging can mean bigger, heavier, and more expensive batteries that cut into your cargo capacity and budget. If we're optimizing more towards this 1 to 1.2 megawatt, we can do that with a much more reasonable size of battery in the, in the 300 to 600 kilowatt hour range. Third, thermal bottlenecks. We also need to look at the thermal bottlenecks in the system. So every point of internal resistance along the long chain of connections from the charging port into the batteries is going to add inefficiency and create heat. Megawatt level chargers push so much current that even small amounts of resistance generate a lot of heat. That means every wire, connector, and onboard component must be carefully sized to handle the load, monitored in real time by software, and cooled effectively to prevent damage. But we don't want to be oversizing the components if we don't need the charging performance. In other words, you shouldn't overbuild for maximum charging speed if you don't actually need it, because it adds unnecessary cost and complexity. Fourth, fault protection. We're talking about big batteries, big stored energy, and high potential for, for fault currents. When you move this much energy, a fault like a short circuit can unleash a surge of electricity that can hit 20,000 to 70,000 amps in an instant. That's enough to melt metal in a flash. Therefore, megawatt charging systems need robust safety systems like industrial grade breakers that can reset, heavy duty fuses that limit dangerous spikes, and multiple layers of protection to keep drivers and equipment safe. So, with these four limits in mind, how batteries behave, how they're built, how much heat they create, and how they're kept safe, let's look at a slide from Mark's presentation that brings it all together. The one megawatt charger, in orange, is fastest but only for a moment. It hits a wall because of thermal limits in the battery state of charge. The 500 kilowatt charger, in green, is a middle ground, but it still steps down as the charge increases. The 150 kilowatt charger, in blue, is the slowest, but it's consistent and simple. 
It operates below the continuous rating of all of the components, reducing stress and eliminating the need for extra cooling. The key takeaway is that doubling your peak power doesn't come close to cutting your charge time in half. You get diminishing returns fast. This chart visualizes why faster isn't a simple solution that leads to the real question. What kind of charging does a fleet actually need? To explain this, Mark gave examples of three common fleet types using data from NACV Run On Less. In each example, you'll see a clock face graphic that illustrates the ideal operation and charging schedule for each scenario. Looking at a single shift local delivery, they're only using about 250 kilowatt hours during that shift, and they sit for over 15 hours. Theoretically, you could handle this with level two AC charging. Many local delivery trucks spend most of their day parked overnight. That means they can easily charge at lower speeds. They simply don't need megawatt charging because they have plenty of time to recharge between shifts. Trying to push 1.2 megawatts into these trucks would just cost more money for no real benefit. The next is regional delivery. Now we're talking about more time on the road, two shifts, 15 hours. We're using 1500 kilowatt hours. It's mostly city driving, not a lot of highway, and our dwell time is down to seven hours. Regional trucks run longer hours and use more energy, often 1500 kilowatts a day, but they still get two windows of around three to four hours to recharge at a depot or hub. For these fleets, 500 to 600 kilowatt chargers hit the sweet spot, fast enough to top off in a few hours, but without the cost or complexity of full megawatt systems. Now we look at the what everyone considers to be the hardest situation to electrify, long haul sleepers, where we're moving down the road, we don't know exactly where we're stopping, we're consuming over 2000 kilowatt hours in that single day of driving. Long haul electric trucks burn through over 2000 thousand kilowatt hours in a single day. But federal regulations mean drivers must stop every eight hours for a 30 minute break. To keep these rigs rolling, you need to dump hundreds of miles of range back into the battery during that short break. That means charging at one megawatt or more, or the truck simply can't cover enough ground to stay competitive with diesel. So we are trying to pack in all of this energy into as few charging stops as possible. And we're trying to add two to 300 miles of range back in that time period. This is where we need one to 1.2 megawatt charging. So the next time you hear about megawatt charging, remember this, it's better to match the charging speed to the job rather than maxing it out for every truck. To learn more about electric truck charging and battery maintenance, watch this playlist on the screen right now.